outside government. Now let's not just take a, a, an Arab example, let's take an American example. How much does government affect your life? On a day-to-day -day basis, okay, I know you pay taxes every year. I understand that. But other than that, on a daily basis, what influence does government have on your life? The major things that are in this country, for example, the, the way you think about fashion, the way you think about what's success and failure, your mentality, you know it doesn't come from the government. It all comes from the private sector. It comes from the entertainment industry, and the academia, and the major corporations that are selling products to us, and running, the, driving the advertising, and, the re, and the, all, even the medical research, and you know, all the research universities funded by private organizations. In other words, the vast majority of things that influence you on a day-to-day -day basis don't come from government. Where do they come from? Well, what I like to call the private sector. They come from the private sector. If Muslims understood that, you know what we would be worried about? If you really want to take over society, you know what you should be taking over? The private sector. Open field. The Muslims haven't even begun to touch the, how many Muslims in media. More powerful than government today is what? The media can change the, the course of elections. The media can get a president impeached. The media can do crazy things. The media can say things like horrible, terrible things like Obama's Muslim. Right? <laughs> and get away with it. Media is powerful. Academia, universities, universities shape the minds of the, 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 the pillars of this society. How many Muslims in academia? How many Muslim sociologists, anthropologists, political scientists, historians? We're not present. We came to this country and we thought success is doctor, engineer, okay fine, you couldn't do doctor, engineer, programmer, right? Uh, you know, I, uh, IT, right? Or, okay, if none of those worked out, gas station, <laughs> right? <So. laughs> this was success for us. If we make good money, if we can buy a nice house, if we can live in a nice neighborhood, we've got success. This is success for an individual, maybe. For a community, look at what, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, baffled by the Jewish community. I'm, I'm amazed by them. You know why? Because when they first came to this country, they were treated like we are treated now. And you know what they got themselves, you could say, oh, they're, they're riba people, whatever. But you know what they, what they really got themselves into? Not just financial institutions. Entertainment, literature, academics, virtually any major university in, in, in the country, a significant proportion of the faculty is Jewish. That's a norm. That's, it is, it's normal, you know. So they became the deep fabric of this country. So it's so much so that they're untouchable. Muslims didn't. We just become, we became skilled labor. That's all we are. Even if you're a doctor, even if you're an engineer, in the end, you're just a highly skilled worker. You're not, a, you're not someone who influences minds or, or causes ripples in society. You, you're not. You know, you're just, a, you're just a better consumer, so you buy a more expensive car, so I guess you're adding to the economy a little bit. But you're not a mover and shaker. You're not an influencer of minds. You understand? So Muslims, we have to understand, to penetrate the society, we need to enter the private sector. To enter the private sector, we need to be in major positions in universities, all over this country. We need to be actually funding. You know Islamic studies program at the University of Chicago is funded by a Jewish group? What do you think that they're gonna, what kind of research they're gonna produce? Which Islamic studies program at the PhD level is being funded by Muslim organizations? There's one attempt being made in, in Detroit with, the, with you know, um, uh, I think in, in Troy, Michigan. And they're asking for an endowment of a couple of million and the Muslims are struggling to come up with those money. I appreciate their effort actually. If you're not entering into the, this is the game. You gotta enter the game. You know the messenger challenges the poets. The poets of our time are the academics. You gotta enter the game. You know, we're not even in it, we're just, we're bubbled uh, by ourselves. So this is a very big thing that we need to enter. We need to have our Muslim youth that are creative, go into media studies, go into film production. This is the language of our, this is the poetry of our time. You know, the, the thing that moved the masses in the time of the messenger was poetry. What moves us today is YouTube, right? We need people that are actually qualified in film production, sociologists. Psy you know, psycho not just psychology, but, but even like historians, Muslim historians, we need them. We don't have them. We don't have, these are things that become the fabric of a society. And the other thing we need is 
huge, massive Walmart-sized businesses. Not just run by individuals, but they're these massive, massive organizations that are funding entire like projects. So for example, I'll give you a secular example like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation from, you know, from Microsoft, right? They give so many endowments to schools across the country and help out and things like that. Muslims need to have institutions like that. That don't just help Muslim institutions, they help America in general. They help America at large. Why should we do this? Because then we become a fabric of this society. We become, they, they can't talk about us like they do now. They talk about us now as though we're like these uh, wild dogs let loose in the society. Literally, that's how we're talked about in the media. There's no, we're not given human dignity when we're talked about. That's not, that's not where we stand. Why not? Because we isolated ourselves. We, uh, we, we did that to ourselves. I'll move along quickly inshallah ta'ala. This is the last thing I'll share with you for today. Probably we'll have another session to finish this discussion. And just to, you know, again, these are, I know there's a lot of different things I talked about here. But again, I just want food for thought. I want us to just think about these things. And inshallah ta'ala, hopefully the purpose of a community is some people are good at some things, others are good at other things. We manage our resources and people get involved in projects that are trying to build one part of the solution, others another part of the solution. And it's all sinking and coming together cohesively. That's what we need, that's the point we need to get. How many human resource managers in our audience today? Any HR managers? Not one? We should have human resource managers. Because we, one thing we need at the level of Muslim community is human resource management. This is what the scholars need to be doing. This is what the, you know, the, the, the reverts who've come to Islam, this is the training they need so they become awesome da'is. This is what our, our, our kids that have finished hivs need to be doing. This is what the mothers of the community need to be doing. Uh, allocating projects to different you know, groups and helping them build this community from the ground up. So here's the last thing I want to share with you for, this, uh, for today. And we'll have a little bit of...